Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video I'm gonna go over a very simple example of how you'd make a real-time strategy game in multiplayer. Now, the good thing about real-time strategy is it's actually, well, most likely the easiest type of game to make multiplayer for. Because all you really have to do is just synchronize the states on the server, and the rest of the game should really handle itself a lot. So in my case, I'm just gonna make a player, which I have a character right here with nothing on him. He has a character controller and a network transform, and then he has a network animator on his body. But what I'm going to be making is just a player that basically just moves and, you know, sets certain steps. So, for example, it would go from, let's say, position 0 to position 1, 0, and then position 1, 1. And that way, he's going to be able to move around in step. Now, each step is going to then take away one movement turn. And each player is going to have a certain amount of movement turns before moving to the other player. So we're sort of going to switch movement between player one, so he can move in like three steps, and then player two can move in three steps, and so on, just like you'd see in a real-time strategy game where, you know, you take turns to typically do some action against each other. So let's have a look into that. So first of all, I'm going to make the player script. So I'm just going to call this RTS player. And then we're also going to make a game manager for this that I'm just going to call RTS game manager. Now you can most likely just call the player controller and game manager. This is just because it's my tutorial project so i'm gonna call it very specifically game manager there we go now one thing i do also have set up in the scene is i do have a canvas the only thing that's on that canvas is a little text mesh pro up in the top corner that's just going to be used for showcasing what state are we currently in that way we can easily follow the logic on both screens make sure that it works and so on so let me throw the rts game manager on here and on the player prefab i'm gonna throw the rts player Go. Let's also just set our variables immediately. So let's just make a private walking speed. I'm just going to make like something like five. Oh, sorry. Let's apply float. And I'm going to make something like a float for the gravity, which I'm just going to make 20. This is just to ensure that he stays on the ground with the character controller. And then I'm going to make a float for something like how far does he move per chosen move, which can, in my case, just be called move distance. And let's actually just already structure it a little bit. So let's give it a header and say this is the movement. Now let's get another header. Which which is just going to be for the camera and uh, let me just copy this really so we can also so i also want the camera to follow my player i'm just going to make a one for a camera speed i'm going to make one for the vector three of the camera offset uh yeah and that should hopefully just be it uh and then let's also just grab the animator now that we are at it so let me make a private header and let's serialize fields there we go beautiful uh we also want to grab our player's character controller so let me get a character private character controller that we're going to call underscore character controller with the character controller you typically want a move direction to be kept track of so i'm going to make a vector 3 move direction we of course want the camera but we're going to make a private camera that's going to be called a uh, camera and then the way that we want to move around is you know i want to press wasd and the direction i press i want to move in a certain distance in that direction but what i'm actually going to be doing is i'm going to have an invisible target and have him just move towards that target so with wasd what you really move around is this target and the player will just run to that and that target is just going to be in the shape of a vector 2 because i don't want to take up and down movement distance into account so let's just do that like so now first things first in a wake let's just grab the stuff that we need so we have the character controller we can say equals to get component of type character controller like so and that just works and then we can have the player camera equals to camera.main uh, and that should be that for it and on the onslaught client let's actually return if we're not the owner so let me do it like so and then we can also set the target position which will just be equals to a new vector 2 which let's set that to the player's current position already so transform.position.x and the transform.position if you're not familiar with positional data i would say go and get some more experience with unity prior to starting multiplayer multiplayer is a very difficult topic so let's not rush into that now we're also going to need an update and a late update the late update is purely going to be for the camera that's just where i think you should always Always, well, for the most cases, at least handle your camera movement as you ensure that all the update data is done before you actually get to late update so the camera can follow something that's actually done moving. Now, the first things first is let's just check whether the player camera is there. If the player camera is not there, we'll just return. And perhaps it's also good to just do a quick check to again to check whether are we the owner or not. If we're not the owner, we just return just to make sure there's no weird shenanigans happening in the beginning. Now, let's have the camera just first of all look at the player. So let's do player camera.transform.look at and 
and then just give it our transform of the current player. That should work just fine. And then let's also have the player camera transform position. Uh, follow the player with the offset that we gave it. So let's do a vector 3.lerp to make it smooth like so. And then we're going to go from our current player camera dot transform dot position to our transform dot position plus the offset. And then we have the camera speed that we're just going to time with time plus the time. There you go. And this should handle our camera movement. This is super basic camera stuff. Now we're getting into the bit more advanced stuff. First things first is we did have the animator. So let me actually just set that. So I'm going to do anim.setfloat. And I've already set up the animator as to the previous videos from the network animation tutorial. And I have one that's called velocity. And I'm just going to put it to the character controller.velocity.magnitude. So that's the speed at which our character controller moves. It's just at what I'm going to set the velocity to and rest should be handled for me. Right. We also have this invisible point that moved around. I do also want my player to look in the direction of the invisible point. So I'm going to do transform that look at and then give it a new vector three. I can't just feed it the point because that's a vector two and we would need that in the shape of a vector three, I believe, in order for it to work. Let's do target position dot X. Let's do our current transform dot position dot Y and let's do target position dot y there we go now our player should also look at this invisible point and just to make it easier for you let's draw it out as a gizmo so on draw gizmos if you're not familiar with gizmos gizmos really just allow you to basically visualize data whatever data that you set up so i'm just going to make a red gizmo here and then i'm going to say gizmos dot draw y sphere there we go and i'm going to draw the sphere in basically the position that we have right here there we go so now if we go out and we press to play the game my character should spawn and we should see a little red sphere at his legs now if you want the gizmos at run time so you can see when i press play oh sorry the animator isn't set up uh, let's set him up real quick animator here let's also set the camera speed i don't know something like three and let's set the camera offset to seven and minus four it's probably good now let's start the game now we can see the camera's working as well and you can see there's no sphere by him which there is in here so if you just click on the gizmos up in the top right you'll see this sphere all of a sudden pop up in the given position now this is the sphere that we need to move around for the for him to move towards so what we need now is to set up the functionality to actually move the sphere or move the point and we also need to set up the functionality for him to actually follow this point so let's get to that now so first things first is i do not want the player to be able to move the target point if the player is not currently at it this is in order to add some delay to the movement to make it also feel more rts like and so they can't just spam out all their moves immediately so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set a vector 2 dot distance and i'm going to check the distance from the target position to the vector 2 position of the player so this would just be the transform dot position dot x and transform dot position dot set and i want to make sure that this distance is less than something like 0.2 just to ensure that they're actually close remember this doesn't take height into account this is purely the x and the z axis so of course if you have any walls that they're going to hit and so on this wouldn't work very well this would work well for maybe like a top-down board game for example and let's open up these brackets now i'm just going to do it the, the lazy way basically and just check the input for every single one uh, so i'm just going to do key code dot w and what we basically want at this point is for the target position to be moved in the direction that we're setting so in this case this is going to be vector 2 dot up times the move distance to take that probably into account to row that in here and then here it's going to be left and down and right there we go so now we should see that you know as long as the distance isn't greater which is not going to be for the very first move at least we should see that we're now able to move this target point and we should see the little wire sphere move around just fine so we're going here you can see boom now it moved in that direction he's also looking at it as he should and i can do that for every direction and that'll work just fine now, the next thing is we want him moving towards this target. So we now want to do basically a bit of the opposite of what we did up here. So, you know, we only want to be able to move the spheres we are within this distance, but we actually only want him to move if he is outside of this distance. That's one way of doing it, at least. Again, you can do it however you want to. So in this case, I want to set the move direction that we use to a new vector three. The reason why I'm putting it inside of brackets is because I'm going to do normalized on all of this. So in this case, we can take the target position, or actually this is the one that we already have a couple of times we have it right here so this is basically the vector 3 that i want to use so that vector 3 minus the transform dot position this is to get the direction from the player towards the target and then we need to times this with the movement speed that we want to use so times and then time that delta time times the walking speed and there we go now we have the move direction that should work just fine and actually i don't need the brackets for this and what we can just say is otherwise the move direction will just be equals to vector 3.0 this is just to make sure that he actually stands still otherwise he would keep moving 
moving in this direction, uh, even when uh, within the distance, which is, we obviously don't want him moving back and forth. And let's also just quickly apply the gravity. That's very basic to do as well. So we're just going to say if the character control is not grounded, then we just take the move direction dot y and just minus equals the gravity times time to delta time. There we go. And the last thing that we need to do is just to move the actual character controller. So you do character control dot move in the move direction. And there we go. The rest should be handled. And now he should actually move towards the given point. We do it like this. So you can see now we can move around just fine. And all we really need now is to for the states to be involved. So let me also try and connect with the other. Oh, here we go. As you can see, he can move around just fine as well. Everything is networked as it should be. Well, here we have an issue. They can hit each other. I'm not going to go too much into the edge cases. That's not really worth the time right now. But as you can see, the movement works. So now let's move into the manager. So we're going to the RTS game manager. There's a few things that we want to do in here and a few things that we want to know. Now, first of all, there's a few things that we want to keep track of in here. So I'm just going to serialize it and say it moves per turn because that's you know one of the ones that i want and then let's also just grab that text already the game state text that's text mesh pro ugy i'm just gonna call game state text there we go and uh, let's just go set that up immediately so we don't forget there we go right now one of the things that we want are the different game states so the way that i'm gonna set those up are with an enum that i'm gonna call game state now an enum is basically like a bool that's true or false but it's just in between anything that you choose so i can have the first one just be none just as a little safeguard i typically do this and then i can have one for the player one turn i can have one for the player two turn i could have one for the i don't know round ending and then i could have one for the game ending this would be i think a pretty normal setup this is because i know there's always only going to be two players in this type of game you could do this way differently than i do you could also iterate through all the players give them one turn at a time or whatever you'd like in my case this makes perfect sense now the way that you do use it is we're going to make a private game state that's going to be called underscore game state now because this is a game state this value will now always hold one of these options by default it will be set to this none it will always be set in general to the first one the reason why i set a number is because if i set this to five then this one would be six seven eight and so on they're all represented by numbers and the good thing about fishnet is they auto serialize enums because they are numbers so they're very easy to synchronize you really just write sync bar like you would normally and boom now it's synchronized because whenever it changes it just sends a number with the network and sets the correct state by that so let me make this manager into a singleton instance so i'm going to make a private static rts game manager i'm going to call this instance and in a wake i'm just going to first of all check to make sure if instance is not equals to null then we just want to destroy this again this is a completely classic singleton setup i'll say instance equals to this and that's where the lower comes there we go okay good now the first thing that we want to do then is on start network we would want to whoops i have not made this a network behavior of course i need to do that remember we need to use fishnet.object and fishnet.object.synchronizing if yours doesn't add these automatically you can always just look at the top the link will also be in the description to the script so you'll always be able to find everything there so let's do the on start network and what we want in here is to set the initial state but one way that i like handling state changing is by making a method for it so i'm going to make a method called change state which is going to take in a game state which is going to be our new game state then i can make a switch statement based on our new state and i can just have my ide out to fill this you can do this with most ides we'll be able to do this i think typically it's all to enter in order to have get that options menu up like this one right so here we have all the possible states and it also just added a default exception this should never actually be able to be reached but just in case it is that's an error telling you exactly what went wrong and we also just want to change our state so we want to just change the game state equals to the new state there we go. this now means that we are able to call something every time that we change state we can immediately call some kind of method for what exactly happens here so i can make a private void start player one turn for example and let's just have another one of these which is called start player two turn and we can throw you in there and you in there so there we go so now these will be called whenever that the respective players turn starts we can also make a private void start round end i know that naming can sound confusing that's just because it's a start method it only gets called once in the beginning of the state okay there we go i could also make one for the game ending i'm not really going to take that into account now and there we go now from the beginning we can just say if we are the server we can then change the state and change this into let's say the player one turn so now we'll change that into the player one turn and then player one start turn will be called now there are two things basically that we want to keep track on off from here this is the current moves that are left in the current round so let's just call this one moves left and i'm also going to keep track of the uh, previous player's game state so i'm just going to call this previous player turn this is in order to be able to switch between two so let's make a let's make this very simple let's make a public static that's the whole point of making this a single turn void player moved now go and we'll have taken the integer of the owner id or actually owner id is bad naming in this case because something's already called that in fishnet so we're going to call it the player id like that 
good right and all we want happening in here is the the thing is we want everything to be kept track on on the server that's the best thing about a real-time strategy game in terms of multiplayer is you can just have everything be server sided because no logic has to be you know happening very fast rts games are not known for their fast pace style so therefore we can just have everything sent to the server so let's just make a server rpc here server rpc with require ownership to false and we'll make a private word player moved server with the integer of player id as a parameter there we go and now we can just call this with the player id and whoops i need to call instance dot there we go so now we can handle anything in here that's you know all the logic on the server so we're going to say the moves left minus minus and then we can say if moves left goes less than or equal to zero then we want something to happen some logic to run which in this case could just be changing the game state to the round end right and then what we could do in this case now if you wanted something to happen maybe a shop or something to open up here that's exactly where you could do it in my case i just wanted switching to the other player's turn immediately and this is where the previous player turn comes into play because we can now make a switch statement based on the previous player's turn we just fill that in we actually only need these two because there are no other states in there and if it's the previous player's turn we can change state into player two turn and vice versa so we basically just invert whose turn it is and now it's just also very important that we actually keep track of who's the previous player's turn previous player's turn in the case of the player one start we'll just set it to player one and for player two we'll just set it to player two there we go and now we're updating that and start as well this is exactly why we're making these start methods are to be able to keep track of anything that we want to set in the beginning in there another thing that we also want to send our set is of course the moves left it needs to be set to the moves per turn so let's also do that immediately every time somebody starts in here left equals to moves per turn go now that's reset as well so the whole reason why we're synchronizing this game state is to be able to check whose turn actually is it and so everybody can do that so that's exactly what i want to do now so we can make a public static pool which is going to return true if you can move so we can for example call it is my turn so this way we can check whether it's actually your turn and we're going to send in the player id now the thing is and the reason why i'm using player one and two is we can actually very easily check whether you know your player one or player two from just using your id so if your player id is equals to zero that means you're going to be player one so that means that if your player id is equals to zero and the instance dot game state is equals to the player one turn that means we need to return true and here we'll return false uh, and we'll just be able to say or and the exact same thing on the other side now we just say if it's player two turn and your player id is one now this might of course turn messy if a player disconnects and comes back and so on that's that's other reasons for why you might not want to hard code numbers but for this example i feel like it works rather well so now we can also use this on the player and call that really easily and we can also now call this every time that we move and make a move and let's just lastly make a unchange with the name of and and we can just call this on state changed. And what we want to do here is we just want to set up the game state to actually be written on the screen so that you can follow around in the logic, see what's happening. So what you got to do here is we got to take in a game state, which is the old state. We've got to take in a game state, which is the new state. And we want to take in the a bool if as server. This is just how the on change method works is it'll send the actual data as the previous data, the new data and a bool whether as to you receive it as the server or not. So that's why this works. Now we can just take the game state text dot text and set it equals to whatever that we like in our case we need another switch statement for the new state and we can just add all the sections and then we can just start going through like this so we can say this is none and let me just throw it in for everyone here so game ended round ended now these are probably not going to be seen the only ones that are going to be seen are these player one turn and player two turn these two are probably the only ones that are actually going to be seen. But now let's just go and show that that actually works. And that sends, sets the first state and so on. Now the thing is, we haven't implemented this into the player yet. So even though we have the logic there, that's actually no player. So you can see now, player one turn. And now we want it so that when we move three times, it should switch to player two's turn. So let's go handle that in the player immediately. Now on the player, all we need to do is just check whether the RTS game manager dot is my turn. And then we'll just send through the own ID. So if this comes back true, it means that we can move. And now the next thing that we need is for the game manager to just say player moved with the owner id in here every time that we've actually made a move so let's just throw that like that and there we go this should just work now we've just implemented the logic and this is really the beauty of the singleton pattern so you can now move one two three times and now it's player two's turn now let me go on to player two and actually just start in the middle of the game that's the beauty of sync virus is they should synchronize up perfectly so it should just know as soon as it enters the game that it's player two's turn and oh i didn't save the scene my mistake then it is of course difficult to have anything updated there we go so now let's try and just test it again 
again move one two three times and then we go over here join and now he already knows that this player is two turn and he moves one two three times now it's player one turn and i can't move anymore i'm trying to move now one two three and so on and this will just you know keep on working like this it's obviously this issue when they walk into each other but we'll we'll figure that one out i really hope that this was you know useful to you and something that you'd want to play around with i know that i've had a few requests for rts games and how you would do those so i'd say this is exactly how i do those and yeah i just hope that you have a wonderful day